Uh, first of all, I would address those people. Uh, I think uh, such people are, are enemies in the gestures of, uh, in, 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 the, in the dress of um, friends. They are foes, not friends. And they are doing more harm than good. Allah does not like the lies. If Allah has not chosen Mufti Mank, if Allah has not chosen Noman Ali Khan, if Allah has not chosen Dr. Zakir Naik yet, that they support Imam Al Mahdi, and Allah has chosen you, ordinary people from all around the world, to come and realize the truth that Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim is going to be Imam Al Mahdi, then why do you want to drag them? into this by associating the wrong things to them. You are associating the truth to them. You are slapping the truth on their face while they themselves do not accept this truth. When Allah has not chosen them for this cause, why do you want to drag them in it? They are not choosing the virtue for themselves and you want to slap that virtue on, your, on their face. And for that purpose, you are choosing the lies. You are associating the lie with them. You are saying that they said something with which they did not. So you are not uh, doing the right thing. Allah does not like the lies. And if Allah has not chosen someone, why are you, why do you want to change that? Do not force your will on Allah. Allah knows better that Allah has to choose someone from a small town, from a small street in Pakistan, from uh, someone from Indonesia, from a small village in Bangladesh, or Allah has to choose a scholar in South Africa. It is Allah's choice that he, Allah is choosing who is going to be the first companions of Imam al-Mahdi. So, so you are not doing the good, you are not benefiting the cause, instead you are harming if you are doing something. And you know, the person you are trying to support through your fake AI videos, Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim, his dreams are true and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dozens of people from all over the world have been shown in their true dreams that he will be Imam al-Mahdi in future. And in his dreams, Muhammad Qasim's dreams, that you believe are true, Allah has said, Muhammad Qasim, that Qasim, whoever calls you a liar, tell them that come over, both of us would send la'natullah, Allah's curse on the liars. So, God forbid, you are on the right cause, you are choosing the haq, the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and may Allah forbid, in order to promote the truth, you are taking the help of the lies. May Allah forgive us, and Allah forbid, be very careful that you may not fall in the curse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told Brother Muhammad Qasim to send on the liars. So, so you're telling the truth in the nutshell that Muhammad Qasim's dreams are true, but you are associating this to someone who Allah has not chosen for this truth. So you are associating, associating a lie with that person. And, and it also shows that somewhere, the tawakkal, the dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is weak. Do you think that Allah is not enough for us? Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs those so-called scholars to spread his word? A few months ago, people, nobody knew us. Nobody knew who Awais Nasir is. Nobody knew who Muhammad Qasim was, is. And nobody knew all other people who are now going viral on social media. People did not know. And now alone, 25 million views, we are getting 
alone, myself, 25, more than 25 million views on social, different social media platforms per month. So Allah has the ability to make you viral if you want to stand with the truth. Allah is, Allah is not needy. Allah is ghani. Wa antum al fuqara. You are the one who need Allah. Allah does not need you. Allah does not need Mufti Mink. Allah does not need Dr. Zakir Naik. Allah does not need Noman Ali Khan. Allah does not need Awais Nasir. Allah does not need anyone. We are the one. Awais Nasir needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah has not chosen Mufti Mink, do not try to drag him into that. You are not doing any good. You are doing harm and you are choosing the wrong path. And, and, and there is a very, very critical matter over here. It is only yesterday that the son of a helper of Muhammad Qasim saw a dream that Muhammad وسلم, comes in the dream of that child. He's 11 or so years old. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advises that, that child that do not leave my rope and do not leave my, 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 what do you call it? Chadar? My sheet. Huh? My shawl? Yeah. Do not ever leave my rope and do not ever leave my shawl. That's what Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, uh, said to that child, and the father of that child is a helper of Muhammad Qasim, is among the companions of Muhammad Qasim and Abdul Karim, that we all truthfully believe that he will be Imam al-Mahdi in the future. The father of that person, that child, was supporting these AI fake videos in different groups. Uh, I'm not in those groups. Uh, some, I have, like, like uh, the news reached me that he, he was supporting and the same day or the next day, his child, his son saw that dream and he saw Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the dream and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised that, advised that do not leave my rope and do not leave my shawl that, why is that? Because sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is his shawl and the rope, وَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And what is that? That is the word of Allah, that is Quran, that the Sharia of Allah, and the Sharia of Allah does not allow you to tell lies. And all those people who are using Quran and Sunnah to justify the lies, those fake videos are not doing any good. And I would say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, says in the Quran that, وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا for a small benefit, do not use Allah's ayah for the wrong things. Do not associate the events of wars for peace. If Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed someone to lie at the time of war, then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the one he did not allow to spread lies during peace. He could have allowed the Sahaba to go over all over the world and lie about Abu Jahl, lie about Abdullah bin Ubay, and lie about anyone around the world to make the news of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, viral around the world, around the tribes of Mecca. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not allow the lies to spread the dawa of Haq. So do not use. The lies to spread the da'wah of Haq, this is no good, and this is, this is not the path and the method and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also it is in the dreams of uh, Muhammad Qasim that the sunnah and the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best path. There is no other path that, that you can use to spread the message. Just trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not be frustrated. And do not let the people point fingers on you and come up with, come up with some proofs that you are the liars. So you are giving them a reason to malign or blame a Muhammad Qasim. So it's hurting the cause overall, which is very bad. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given, has enough, given us enough success. We are getting millions of views all over the world. 
and people are realizing the truth. But now we are being associated with the liars. So uh, I do not support that and I have, n I have like no connection with such people and I do not support uh, those people. That, that was the first part, uh, part for the people who are making such videos. And now coming to the second part and I would address uh, Mufti Muhammad uh, Ismail Mink uh, directly. Uh, who has tweeted against uh, Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim, uh, who has tweeted about against uh, Imam al-Mahdi. And he uh, did not only tweet, but also he recorded a li live video on Instagram. And he said some things um, uh, against Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim uh, that we believe will be Imam al-Mahdi in future. Uh, so uh, dear Mufti Mink, first things first, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like when someone say that I'm a scholar. This, this is not good. Uh, it's, it's not an advice, uh, dear sir. Uh, this is what Quran says. Uh, even Musa alayhi salam, when he was asked, this is in Surah Al-Kahf, you know, uh, sir, <clears throat> that uh, this is in Surah Al-Kahf, that when Musa salam claimed that I am the most knowledgeable, Allah, even he was the prophet and one of the most beloved prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa salam to go and meet a person. And that person is not a prophet, but Allah gave him special knowledge, special ilm from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even Musa did not understand. Allah did not like it that when Musa said that I'm a scholar, I know something. So this is very bad, sir. This is an advice. This is a suggestion. And this is from Quran, that when you said that myself and more scholars from all over the world, um, you, you associated yourself with, uh, with, with the top scholars from around the world, which is very good. I hope uh, you would realize your mistake and uh, we all are the students of knowledge. Uh, Nobody is a scholar. Uh, only Allah knows who is the scholar. When Imam al-Mahdi arrives, he will be the scholar. And he will not say, I'm a scholar. He will not say, I'm a scholar people will realize that he is the scholar and Allah will tell people and Allah will make people to realize that he is the scholar at that time. That's the first thing. I hope you will realize your mistake. Uh, second thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ba'da'awzu billahi minash shaytanir rajim, Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu, in ja'akum fasikum bin naba in fatabajanu, and to see bu kaumum bi jahalatin fatusbihu alama faaltum nadimin. That all, all the people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when a liar, when a person brings a news to you that you do not trust, then it is upon you, then it is upon you to verify that news. Be very, be very careful. You might happen to harm a nation. You might happen to harm someone. And then you realize that you made a mistake. So first of all, if someone made a fake video, if someone among the people who believe in, believe that Muhammad Qasim will be Imam Mahdi, has made a video, has used out of frustration or out of mischief. We do not know. It could be a mischief. How could, if, if they made an a AI video and associated a lie with you, then you should have realized, then you should, it was upon you that, that you should have verified if Muhammad Qasim did that or somebody else. What if? It was done someone from the other side. What if the people who do not believe in Muhammad Qasim did that to, to, to malign him? It was upon you, you could verify that, which does not seem you did. So uh, you, another mistake that you made over there, right? Now, you said a few other things uh, in, in your tweet and in your um, Instagram live. And also you commented uh, 
replied to someone uh, on your Instagram and you said that Imam Al Mahdi will not have to use YouTube, TikTok, Instagram and other social media to announce that he is the Mahdi. I understand that Imam Al Mahdi will not announce that he is the Mahdi. You are very correct on that part. But I think you made a mistake on that part where you said Imam Al Mahdi will not have to use TikTok, Instagram or YouTube. Where do you drive that conclusion from? How do you think the message of Imam al Mahdi will not spread through technology? Why? Why? Because Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born in Mecca. Why? Because Umar radiyallahu taala anhu had Zulfiqar, the sword that he took and went all the way around the world to 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 conquer the lands for Allah subhanahu wa taala. Why? Just because that you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give the highest technology, highest success, highest means of that time to Imam al-Mahdi? I think there is a mistake over there as well. This is the sunnah of Allah. This is, this is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does things. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises the truth from the roots, from the ground. Initially, it looks very low. Initially, it looks that it is below others, below other material means. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this world, this universe, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smashed the truth on batil, haq on batil and finished the batil. This is how it happens. Initially, the truth starts from the, from, from the grounds, from the basis. It looks like it's, it has no value. Eventually, it is made successful. And eventually, all of the means with the truth are more powerful than the ones on the opposite side. Examples. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started his dawah from Mecca. He was... Among the people who did not have the material means, they were among the so-called uh, uh, the camel, the people of uh, the people of uh, deserts, the camel riders. But eventually, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave them more success than the Roman Empire, more success than the Persian Empire. That's the first example. Second example: Musa alayhi salam was born in the slave, slave nation. But the highest knowledge, highest means of that time was sorcery, was the magic. Firaun brought all of the magicians and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Moses, Musa alayhi salam, a, a miracle from himself and that miracle was more powerful all, than all those magicians. So the truth finished the lies, the haq finished the battle, and it, the means with haq were more powerful than the means with the battle. Another example, Sulaiman had the highest technology of his time. Sulaiman had his, had his seed, that would fly on the air all around the world, wherever he wanted to go. And it was a very comfortful, comfortable seat. It was, not, it was not something that would be pushed by air and it, would, it was not something that would be pushed by winds in an uncomfortable manner. It was one of the very luxurious, very comfortable rides of that time. And it was um, above every technology the world could see at that time. So, the, the, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends looks like he is very like down initially but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them success but they use all the means of that time Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used the horses and the camels and the swords and, and, and the armor of that time because that was the norm at that time Musa alayhi salam used uh, all of the means as of his time, because that was whatever being used at that time. 
Sulaiman salam and Dawood salam was even beyond, their material means were even beyond than anything else that was available at that time. So whenever, even if you don't believe Muhammad Qasim is Imam Mahdi, which you are wrong, but clarify your concept that whatever the means would be, Imam al-Mahdi would be using those means and those means would be more advanced and more accessible to Imam al-Mahdi than anyone else. Initially, Imam al-Mahdi is using TikTok, video, videos, YouTube, Instagram, or his people are, his companions are. Initially, it's that, and people like you and other people are not believing, and you think that Allah has not given him, him as big of popularity, as much of a fam as you, then you think that he is someone lower than you, and you, you're not paying attention to him. Initially, it's the situation, but when the truth when the time for the truth to spread arrives, then you would see your views would be nothing in front of the views of Imam al-Mahdi, inshallah, on social media initially. Because this is the time of social media, and Imam al-Mahdi has appeared in this time, and this is the time when social media, you will see that the success of Imam al-Mahdi on social media would be more than anything else you have ever seen. Initially, that would be that. That's how the message would spread. But eventually the means, the material means of Imam al-Mahdi would be more advanced, more powerful, more than anyone else. He would have the black jet fighters, he would have the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will help, uh, he, will, he will lead Ghazwatul Hind with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help with the most advanced technology that the world has ever seen. So you, you made that mistake over there as well. And you said a couple of other things that he would be very fluent in Arabic. So I would ask you, uh, from which hadith did you, did you derive that? I, I have never come across uh, any other hadith in which uh, it is said that Imam al-Mahdi would be very fluent in Arabic. That's, that's your assumption and you have got no, uh, no proofs for that, no basis for that. So, um, and also, uh, in the end, because we have realized that you watch uh, videos uh, and you watch social media, and we have realized that our message has been uh, has 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 been delivered to you, and uh, it it reaches you. So I would suggest you to please um, make yourself. That's, that's just a suggestion. Make yourself um, bow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you do. But connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek Allah's guidance in this regard. You can simply do istikhara. Uh, you can simply ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. Dozens of people, maybe hundreds of people from all around the world have done that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told them that Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim is going to be Imam al-Mahdi. Right, one thing uh, that I forgot, uh, and, and, and uh, Alhamdulillah I recalled with Allah's help, uh, that you also said that, um, that Imam al-Mahdi will not get dreams, and he does not have to spread dreams. Then I ask you, how would Imam al-Mahdi be guided? If he, do, if he will not get dreams, what is the means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would talk to his Khalifa on earth? Khalifatullah al-Mahdi on earth. How? Would he send a, an angel? Then it will be wahi. Imam al-Mahdi is not going to be a prophet that he will receive wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you would say no. There is no angel who would come and bring Allah's message. So how would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be guiding his Khalifa on earth. How? Second thing, do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would talk to Imam al-Mahdi like Allah did with Musa alayhi salam? You would say no, because it will be wahi. And Imam al-Mahdi will not going to be a prophet, so wahi. He cannot receive wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is the means defined in Quran, on, Quran and Sunnah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can guide a person. I will let you think. 
then just like you told your follower, followers to, to use their common sense, I would ask you to use your common sense. Quran says that, mean, that dreams are a very authentic source of receiving message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like the king of Egypt did. Just like the two people, two fellas of uh, Musa alayhi salam received dreams from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that came true. Just like Yusuf alayhi salam saw a dream. Yusuf alayhi salam was a prophet, but the king of Egypt was not. The fellows of Yusuf alayhi salam who received dreams in, 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 uh, in captivity were not, were not the prophets. So Allah has mentioned dreams in Quran and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khatam al there is going to be no prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also clear, clearly told us that dreams are the 46th part of Nabuwa. It is not Nabuwa, but it is the 46th part of Nabuwa. And the, in other hadiths, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told when there would be nothing left out of prophethood, then there would be mubashirat, Saba asked what are mubashirat and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told that they would be the true dreams that someone sees or uh, about himself or somebody else sees about someone else. How come I'll call? So whenever Imam al-Mahdi arrives, whoever you are waiting for, if he is the truth one, truthful one, there is only one way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would cure him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would teach him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would guide him, and that only way is the true dreams from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any Muslim who believes in Quran and Sunnah cannot reject that fact, including yourself, and I'm very, very hopeful that you would reconsider whatever you have said. One more thing, you have like, I thought you made one or two mistakes, but I've, it seems like there were, your tweet and your uh, Instagram like uh, video is full of errors. Another one, the last one I hope, uh, if I don't recall another one, that you said that this person, Ima, uh, Muhammad Qasim, you, without mentioning his name, this person from Pakistan is, has claimed that I am the Mahdi. You made another mistake over that. You would not find any such thing from Muhammad Qasim. You would rather find 180 degree other way. Muhammad Qasim does not like to be called Imam al-Mahdi. Muhammad Qasim has not claimed Imam al-Mahdi. It is me who says Muhammad Qasim will be Imam al-Mahdi and I have convinced so many people all around the world. Allah knows, I'm not saying, I'm not claiming anything. I'm not boasting. Allah knows I'm truthful or not. So it's better for you as well that you would have to ask Allah if this person is truthful or not, Imam, Muhammad Qasim does not claim Imam al-Mahdi. It is me who has openly said, and this is how the message has spread all over the world. And there are many other people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told in the dreams that Muhammad Qasim will be Imam al-Mahdi. So you, you, this is Bhutan, this is very bad. You, you also made the same mistake. You associated something with Muhammad Qasim that he did not say. So you fell for something. So you fell for, fell for fitna, nauzubillah. Whoever made those videos, maybe he was someone who made a mischief. Maybe he was someone who wanted to malign Muhammad Qasim. And you fell, you fell for it now. You, you also made the same mistake that you that you are blaming Muhammad Qasim for. First of all, those, you have no proof that those videos are made by Muhammad Qasim. Maybe it, would, it is somebody who made this out of uh, frustration that people all over the world are not uh, realizing the truth. Whoever did that, did wrong. But you also did the same thing. You also made the same mistake that you associated those videos uh, with Muhammad Qasim. And also you said that Muhammad Qasim claimed Imam al-Mahdi, which he did not, so which is a very big mistake. You also associated a lie uh, with Muhammad Qasim, just like somebody else associated a lie with you. But whoever associated that lie with you had a greater good in his mind. He wanted the truth to reach you. But you did, you opposed the truth 
and made a bohtan on Muhammad Qasim, uh, Imam Al Mahdi, that we believe he will be in a near, a near future. That's uh, like a big mistake. Uh, hope you would repent and you would uh, you would take your statements back. And uh, and I repent from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala first of all for all of the mistakes that I make. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala forgive me and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala guide us to the truth. And uh, Imam Al Mahdi, that we know for sure is Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim. He will not need the lies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need any scholars or so-called celebrities uh, to spread his word. So uh, the truth would prevail and we will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make the truth spread and the battle would vanish. Aqulu qawli haza wa astaghfirullah li wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad.